Welcome, everybody. It's time once again for another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio. Right here in the Funnel Radio channel. So grab a board, catch a wave, and do like our host. Put a little Santa cap on when you're surfing this morning here. That's what Matt does. A little Santa cap, a little, uh, little holiday cheer. <laughs> a little eggnog. Yeah, exactly. I, I feel like we were. I was just out with the kids for Halloween. This happens every year. We were just, we were just doing trick-or-treating, yeah. and then all of a sudden I was late ordering my turkey. And now, a couple days ago, my wife and I went, you know, and to try to get, you know, gifts for the kids. And, you know, you, we go, you know, it's because Toys R Us is closed, we have to go to Amazon. <laughs> right. Uh, and, and you already, some of the popular gifts, I mean, you can already back ordered until January. So oh we're goodness. already behind. It's um, going too fast. Thank goodness you're always ahead of the curve, though, when it comes to this show. Uh, well, I wouldn't say that every <laughs> time, Paul, as you well know. But uh, we are excited to have everyone join us again here for another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio. Thank you so much to everyone who is joining us on the live feed. We are here live every Thursday at 1130 Pacific, 230 Eastern as part of the Funnel Media Radio Network. So thanks for listening to us at work. For those of you that are joining from the podcast, thank you so much for subscribing. Our numbers, I think our numbers have grown more in the last eight months, Paul, than the first two years and four months. It's been pretty exciting to watch the hockey stick thanks so much everyone for joining very humbled by the audience that we have now and if you like what you're hearing today if you're hearing this for the first time or maybe the second time you're wondering what else we've been up to this is we're in we're coming up on beginning year four of doing sales pipeline radio you can find every episode every past episode of sales pipeline radio every past present and future episode of sales pipeline radio i, I tried to keep them out of the studio but the crowd is just out there Nice. Uploading, Although you've got the sound effect board. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, we find all those episodes on salespipelineradio.com. Every week we are featuring some of the best and brightest minds in sales and marketing, especially in B2B. Today is no different. Very excited to have with us Anil Call. He is the CEO of Absolute Data. And Anil, excited to have you here. My first question actually is, you go through sort of your resume and what you've done. You have a PhD in marketing from Cornell University, and you don't see a lot of doctorates in marketing. Tell me how that came about, and, and what was your dissertation? What did you study? Uh, very happy to be on the show. Uh, yes, well, you know, there are a few people like me who like marketing so much that they decided to do a dissertation in it. <laughs> right? it. So marketing was something that always fascinated me, and I wanted to understand how could you use data to do better marketing, which is quite a rage these days, but when I was doing my PhD, it wasn't as much. And I actually focused on how to build pricing strategies with data. So that was what my marketing uh, thesis was all about. But I think more importantly, it was just me learning how do you use data to make better decisions, whether it's marketing, sales, or any of those areas. Well, I think we take that for granted now in marketing that data is so, so important. But, you know, back in 1995, especially in B2B, not something that was thought of a lot. Talk a little bit about that journey and how you've seen that evolved. I mean, you've been uh, running absolute data for, you know, many, many years now and seen that there. But in your time back at McKinsey and, you know, as you've gone through your marketing career, talk about the evolution of data from when you started to where we are today. You know, the evolution of data and how it gets used has been super fascinating. And I fortunately have had kind of a frontline view of all of that. When I started my career, data analytics used to be something sitting at the back of the, you know, back of the office. There would be two nerdy guys doing something on a computer and the rest of the people had no idea who they are and what they do. Mm -hmm. And I think I've seen all of that grow, come to the front, and now you have entire companies, entire industries that are getting completely disrupted, changed, transformed because of data and what data enables you to do. So that's been a very exciting journey. And, you know, I've, uh, in fact, uh, when I started my career, that was what I saw and I thought would happen. When I was at McKinsey, I could see very clearly that the work that we were doing there entailed a tremendous amount of data analysis and a lot of times just bringing data that the clients hadn't looked at or sometimes had it and just hadn't realized that they had the data. Now that is becoming mainstream. Today when I sit in an Uber and somebody asks me what I do and I talk about AI and data analytics, we have a very interesting discussion. That mm -hmm. wasn't the case even five years back. So I think you know now data is become central to 
what is happening in marketing and sales in a lot of other areas of the world as well. So let's talk about artificial intelligence. I think this is where we went from using data quite literally and quite directly to now using information to make conjectures and to create new experiences for customers. I think maybe five years ago, the big buzzword in B2B was maybe social selling, social media. A couple of years later, account-based marketing. And then we started talking about AI. And I think there's been a lot of interest in artificial intelligence, a lot of discussion. I think, you know, inevitably that sort of initial frothiness turns into what exactly is it and how do we use it? And you guys really have an absolute data at the forefront of this. Talk about what AI means to you and what are some of the practical applications that can help more marketers and more business leaders wrap arms around how to leverage it? Great. You know, AI is actually something that's been around for a long time. I personally got introduced to AI in 1992 and I tried using AI at that point of time when I was in my PhD program. I tried using AI in 97, 98 when I was at McKinsey. So it's been around. However, the challenges in the past has been, had been that, you know, all the things that you needed to come together, which is large amounts of data, uh, computing power, and some advances in, you know, making the computing cheaper. I think those are things that were missing. And today, all those three things have come together, and AI is suddenly very powerful. Now, of course, the question is, what really is AI? So if you think of AI, it's essentially getting machines to act like humans. And what does that really mean? That basically means three things. First is machines having the power to visualize that sense. So they can visualize, they can hear, and get meaning out of that. So you can Mm -hmm. take a picture and tell you it's a cat versus a dog. The second is the ability to understand text, right, which is is where all the uh, text analytics piece comes in. So if I have a paragraph that I've written, AI is then able to understand what is the message that I'm trying to convey through that. And the third is ability to make complex decisions. And complex decisions are where you have to weigh in a lot of different factors, you have certain rules you follow. There is certain things that you have to be able to achieve. Those are the three things. So AI is about sensing, about understanding, and then making complex decisions. And this is what is, so what happens typically is when you read about AI in the media, the big focus tends to be on the first two pieces, uh, you know, not on the third one. But it's the third one, the decision-making piece, which is the most applicable area for the businesses. Let's say if I'm a salesperson, I need a tool that can act like my smart assistant and help me make those decisions. There is so much amount of data available today. There is so much information available today. Somebody needs to go through all that. I can do it if I have the skills, but then I don't have enough time to do it, right? So, so skills and capability and time, all of those things, this is where AI and machines come in and make my, you know, my sales team's life very really easy. Love it. So if I'm, uh, we're, and we're talking today with doing Neil Call, he's the CEO of Absolute Data, talking a little bit about artificial intelligence and sales and marketing. Should I be thinking about AI as a replacement for people? Should I be thinking about it as a way to make the required people in my business smarter, better, faster, making better decisions? If I need to think about an investment in artificial intelligence, what does that add or what does that replace or reduce? And it could be multiple of those answers, but curious how you think about the um, sort of the ROI or the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the cost-benefit analysis around that. Great. Yeah. You know, there is, of course, there's a lot of discussion about AI replacing people and AI people not having any, any more jobs to do. And I actually don't agree with that because I see AI as a tool that makes people better and more effective and lets them do the things that they really like and want to do. Mm-hmm. And I don't think AI is going to be ready to replace people. And in fact, there are quite a few examples where what we have seen, you know, the best AI combined with great people is what beats everything. You just cannot, you know, a single AI can't compete with that. So I think the future is an, is an AI-enabled world, not an AI-dominated world. So if now I think it's from a sales perspective. You know, think of it this way. Today, uh, as I was saying earlier, there is so much information available. There is so much data available. And as a salesperson, you know, my core skill set is not data analysis. My core skill set is not my ability to read these 500 reports that showed up in the morning. My core skill is to 
take that information, understand what it is, and use that on the selling process. So the AI is really good at what I, as a salesperson, am not really skilled to do. So AI will, you know, look for trends, understand all this data, understand and tell me for this particular customer, what should my game plan be? What should I do today? What should I do tomorrow? Who should I connect with? What with what product? With what message? What channel? And then I, of course, still have to execute on that and do that. And hence, I become a lot more effective as a salesperson with that. Mm-hmm. And this is where the second part of your question comes in from an ROI perspective. The ROI of AI is, by the way, very high, very quickly, very high. And the reason is because it suddenly takes your sales team and literally removes 50, 60% of the work that they don't enjoy doing, that takes the time away from the actual selling, that takes away the time from actually connecting with the customer, and on top of that, provides you information and a very deep understanding of what the customer really wants. So the moment you have that, you have you know you can take an average salesperson and turn them at, into as good as any of your superstar salespeople. And well, and in the addition answer. to that, not only making those sales reps more efficient, there's a there's a rising tide for everybody, right? There's a level of consistency and predictability in performance, in efficiency that can happen across the board. And I think that's it seems to me that's particularly exciting in in selling because you've got, you know, inherently, you know, even with systems in place, even with a you know equal number of leads, equal quality of leads, you've got different reps that have different abilities, different skill sets, and different levels of performance. And so the ability to create a sustained and higher and more predictable level of selling efficiency and results um, gets pretty exciting. Yeah, let me give you a couple of you know examples. We have a client that sells industrial supplies. And you know, in the industrial supplies world, whenever you find out that a customer is opening up a new manufacturing plant or a new factory or a, a new workshop, that's great, great and exciting news because you know that's where I'm going to get a lot of sales. What we found uh, through the AI solution was that the best time to call was about six to eight months after the announcement of a particular uh, plant opening. Mm-hmm. Now, what was happening in the real world? You know, as a salesperson, as soon as I saw that a plant is going to open, I would get on the phone and start connecting with those people. So I was literally wasting six months of time and effort in connecting when the customer wasn't ready to buy. With Mm. AI, you find that out, hey, this is an opportunity, don't call them, now call them after eight months, and by the way, as an AI assistant, I will tell you a week in advance, this is the right time to call them. That's one example of where suddenly AI is now increasing efficiency of any salesperson who's there. The second example is, uh, this is for uh, actually a telecom uh, equipment manufacturer uh, here in, in Chicago. So, we took their sales data, applied our AI engine on it, and we were able to generate $180 million worth of leads that were not in their CRM system. I think of it that you have lead generation happening without the salesperson having to move that single finger. And not only did we generate those leads, and these were very likely to win leads. Then we were also able to find out about $250 million worth of leads well in advance of one as typical salesperson finds out about them. Mm -hmm. So as a salesperson now, my lead pipeline is getting filled on its own without me having to do something about it. That is where you suddenly start seeing the power that AI starts bringing to you as a sales team. Love it. We've got Anil Call with us today on Sales Pipeline Radio. He's the CEO of Absolute Data. we got to take a quick break, pay some bills. We'll be right back with more on artificial intelligence, how to get started, how to get this uh, train rolling to improve your business. We'll be right back on Sales Pipeline Radio. <laughs> The way we do business is advancing faster than ever before. Yet amongst the disruptions, there's one pillar that stays standing through it all, the power of a relationship. Relationships are at the core of everything. So how are today's organizations developing, nurturing, and leveraging them to drive success? Join Matt Hines and Sigster's VP of Marketing, Justin Keller, for the on-demand webinar, The State of Relationship Marketing. 
and learn how your team can bridge the gaps between relationships and revenue. Listen now at HeinzMarketing.com. That's H-E-I-N-Z Marketing.com. And here's another thought as you head into the holidays and look at uh, the new year coming rapidly at us. Think about it. Are you tired of sending sales emails and wondering if they're ever even opened? Forget about reading them. Did anybody even open them? Well, if so, you need MailTag. MailTag is a Chrome browser extension for your Gmail that allows you to track your emails in real time. You receive alerts right away on your desktop as soon as an email is open. And as a special thank you for being a listener of this show, we've teamed up with MailTag to provide you guys with a special discount on a future subscription. Think about this. Could be something to start the holidays or something to give one of your employees or friends or uh, vendors. Might be something that uh, would put you on their radar for the next year. If you're interested, you can use the promo code HEINZ, H-E-I-N-Z, and you can get 50% off for life. Not just for a year, but for life. So be sure and check out MailTag.io to start your completely free 14-day trial. Check it out. See if there's something you can use. No credit card required. And that if it is, use that promo code HEINZ and get 50% off for life. That's just smart for the holidays. From the man who brings us all sorts of smart ideas, uh, Matt Hines. Now, every once in a while, thank you, Paul, and thank you so much for our sponsor, uh, Sales Pipe Radio, MailTag.io. I can't recommend them enough. And I think, oftentimes, you think about, okay, if I'm in sales, I want to see open and open and uh, open rates and click rates and uh, see that activity on my emails. But if you're a business development, if you're trying to get any kind of uh, engagement with a prospect and trying to figure out who to call back, it's uh, it's a great tool to use. Yes, Paul. You know, I just made that up on the spot, but maybe it is a crazy idea to give. Let's say you've got a big client or a big vendor, and you want to thank. Them. Don't just give them a, a bottle of wine or a, you know, a gift certificate. Give them the gift they'll use all year long, maybe forever here. It's the gift that keeps on giving there, Paul. <laughs> I'm and telling that's you. What we, that's what we try to do here at Steel's Pipe Radio as well. Keep, speaking of the gift that keeps on giving, we are here through the end of the year. We're going to pre-record a couple episodes here for the last couple weeks of the year. We've got Alex Schutman, who is the CEO of Workfront, is going to be joining us in a couple weeks. And then in January, we're going to start off with a bang. We're going to have Scott Ingram. He is the author of the one per- uh, it is the stories and success and best practices from the top 1% of salespeople in the country. And then Tiffany Bova, who is one of the chief evangelists at Salesforce, uh, she's going to join us as well and talk about her new book. But today we got some more time with Neil Call. He's the CEO of Absolute Data. We're talking about artificial intelligence impacting and improving decision making throughout the enterprise, particularly in sales and marketing. I think one of the challenges, Neil, in, 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 with AI and sales and marketing is is approachability. I think it, it feels like a big intimidating thing. I mean, you're sharing some success stories that are that are compelling, but might actually be intimidating for folks. What's what are the best ways for some people to get started with artificial intelligence? You know, if we're looking at you know sort of get, dipping the toe in the water, if it's even possible at the beginning of 2019, where do you see people most successfully getting started? Yeah, you know, uh, AI is quite intimidating when you look at AI itself. However, from a use perspective, actually it's not. Let me give you an example of something where you use AI every day and nobody usually is much intimidated about it. GPS, right? All of us use a GPS uh, for driving. Now behind the GPS is tremendous amount of data there is a huge amount of AI that in real time tells you what route you should be taking as you go from point A to point B. And good AI solutions are built exactly like the GPS. And that's, by the way, what we do at Absolute Data as well. That's our focus. Because as a salesperson, I don't want to give you something where you haven't spent hours learning how to use. It should be something that exactly like a GPS tells you where you are, on your sales process and making your sale and what you should be doing next to get to that end point of signing that account, signing that big sale that you want. So, you know, the AI products that have been designed well, and there are, by the way, quite a few of those out there, they make it very easy for the user to use it. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, how do I get started? Now, you know, as an organization, 
I have a very long answer about what to do that. I won't get into that. I will uh, focus more if you're a salesperson. There are quite a few tools out there that help you with, you know, automating some of the easy tasks that you have to do uh, manually otherwise. You know, you can, for example, there are, uh, we have a, uh, I'll talk about one of our pieces here. We have a tool which captures all the news about a particular account that you have, goes through the news items and figures out the ones that are relevant to you for your selling. So for example, if you are selling a sales tool to a client to let's say FedEx, if mm -hmm. I'm selling a sales tool, I don't want to hear about FedEx you know, doing something on their back end, on their freight. I want to focus on the things that are related to sales. So what this tool does is it reads all those articles and only gives you the ones that are relevant from the sale that you're going to make perspective. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of tools like this that are available that you can sign up, test it, because uh, most of the time they're relatively quick uh, to build, they're quick and uh, they're cheap uh, to test, and you can start learning. As I said, think of AI as your assistant. Think of these tools starting to become your assistants in doing, helping you do some of those tasks and some of those things that you have to do to become more effective as a salesperson. Got it. Well, we are at the end of 2018. Uh, we're not going to get into prediction time, but I want to sort of go back and say, okay, if we were a year ago, what are some things this year, Anil, that have surprised you in B2B? What are things that you've noticed that you didn't expect that you think might have an impact or have implications for sales and marketing leaders heading into 2019? I think, you know, the most surprising thing for me has been how quickly sales and marketing leaders have you know, adopted the idea of getting AI in. You know, it's not mm. in there in most of the places. However, I think, you know, in the beginning of the year, the big challenge was going to people and saying, hey, we, you should be thinking about AI. Today, the challenge is not that anymore. It is about how to do it. And I think that, you know, that's a very disruptive change. That's a big change that's happened in lots of industries. And that I'm... I was very surprised. I thought it would take a couple of years before people will get completely convinced they should do that. Today, uh, the challenge for us is just managing and maintaining all these people who are coming and saying, you know, help me do it. I don't need to be convinced anymore that I should be doing this. What are some mistakes people make when they get started with, you know, we talked about some, some of the best practices of getting started, but what are some mistakes you see people make that keep them from uh, seeing the success that they want uh, with AI? I think, I think the biggest mistake that people make with AI is they think, to solve my business problem, I need AI. Mm -hmm. By the way. <laughs> I think that's the biggest mistake, and I'll tell you why I'm saying that. You do need AI, so I'm not saying you don't. However, you actually need three other things along with AI. You need to have great AI that has, you know, analytical models behind it so that it can actually solve your problem in an efficient manner. But uh, that's the first thing. The second important thing is that it has an ability to pick up your context. Because mm -hmm. AI, by the way, is very good at making recommendations, very good at telling you it's really bad at picking up context. So what happens is if you haven't built the tool in a way which is able to pick up your context, right? So it's my, uh, if I'm a salesperson, my context. It gives you recommendations that don't make sense. It gives you, it tells you to do things that are not right. So building these AI tools without, you know, the right analytical models, without the right context, and then finally, putting the technology in a way and building a solution in a way which is easy to use. It mm -hmm. is not something where the person who's using has to do anything beyond asking a question and getting an answer. I think those are the kind of mistakes that I have seen, that we have people who make this great AI model, but you know, when the user goes and they look at this interface and it's like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. I need 20 hours of training before I can use that. You lost, it's not gonna happen. True. I think those are Wrapping up here, last couple minutes with Anil Call. He's the CEO of Absolute Data. First of all, Anil, where can people learn more about AI, learn about more about Absolute Data, and especially just to sort of go deeper on sort of the why AI and how AI uh, uh, on your website? Yeah, so you know, on our website, if you go to the uh, to to the uh, our Navic AI, which is the platform that we have built, uh, that section there is actually a lot of educational material that we have put. In fact. My job today is basically education because 
everybody wants to know, explain to me what is AI in simple terms, what can it do for me, and how do I go thinking about it and adopting it in my organization, in my day-to-day -day life. So we put a lot of educational material on that. Uh, you know, if anyone has any questions on that, I am always happy to have conversations on those things. And I write a blog. I publish quite a bit about AI. Uh, in fact, I just published an article talking about how you can have dynamic playbooks for your sales team using AI. So there's a lot of information available out there, which is really useful and happy to share that. Love that. Thanks for doing that. That uh, article on dynamic sales playbooks with AI, definitely worth reading. you find that on the HubSpot blog. Uh, go check that out. Well, I want to thank our guest today, Anil Call. He's the CEO of Absolute Data. Some good insights into AI, and I think there's a lot of frothiness and a lot of uh, a lot of words used around AI, and I think a lot of people are asking the question reasonably of, you know, how do you translate that into some real value for sales and marketing? I think we got some good ideas here today. If you want to share this episode with others on your sales and marketing team to help further demystify artificial and artificial intelligence, Intelligence for sales and marketing. We'll have an on-demand version of this webcast, uh, this uh, podcast, up on salespipelineradio.com in a couple days. We'll also have a transcript with notes and links to Absolute Data on our website at heinzmarketing.com here in about a week. Thank you very much for joining us. On behalf of my producer, Paul, this is Matt Heinz. We'll see you next week on Sales Pipeline Radio. You've been listening to Sales Pipeline Radio, brought to you by the good folks at Matt Hines Marketing, right here in the Funnel Radio channel for at-work listeners like you.